Okay, welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to show you how you can quickly create a string pattern, also known as a nostinato, based on a chord progression. Uh, there are many ways to do that. You could play it on your MIDI keyboard, you could use your mouse to draw it on a grid. I want to show you a really quick way to do it. And as I'm not a keyboard player, this is the, the method I usually use. So let's get to it. First of all, I have this simple chord progression here, nothing complicated. Uh, C sharp, F sharp, B and back to C sharp with a different inversion. Um, let's just check how this sounds. Okay, nothing complicated here. So the first thing we want to do is to find some strings, right? Okay, so I go to my strings folder and we will use violas and from the violas we will use cinematic strings 2 and the staccatissimo articulation. Staccatissimo works really fine for what I'm going to show you. They, they are short notes uh, played on the violin. This is how it would sound. Okay, so that's what we want. First thing I'm going to do is to cut the piano here and paste it on the violas. Now the, the, the range for the viola, uh, this is a bit low. So I'm going to shift this up one octave. Okay. And because I will want to use triplets, uh, I want to have three notes only per, per chord. So I'm going to remove these bass notes here. And that's it. Now, the MIDI effect I was talking about and this you find it in any other DAW, whether it's Logic or Ableton, FL Studio and all, they all have arpeggiators. Here I'm using Cubase and in Cubase I have to click on MIDI inserts. And inside the MIDI inserts here I have all my MIDI effects and Cubase comes preloaded with two arpeggiators, one is called Arp Arpash 5 and the other is Arpash SX. I'm using Arpash SX for this example. So this is what the arpeggiator windows a window looks like. First it will ask you for the direction that you want to use. By default I think it's up down, meaning that it will first play the Top note, then the middle one, then the bottom one, go back to the middle one, top note, and so on and so forth. What I want is a downward uh, pattern. So I'm going here and I select down. Then it will ask you for the step size and the length. I said before that I want to use triplets, so I'm going to select triplets both for the size and the length and that's about it. So I can close my arpeggiator and let's see how this sounds. Okay, this is exactly what I want. But as you can see, uh, I still see my chords in my MIDI grid and I want to be able to edit each individual note. Uh, I don't want to see the, the chords anymore. So in Cubase, I, uh, I know you can do the same in Logic. I don't know how you do the, uh, the, the same in other DAW is you go first, you have to select the event and you have to solo the track. And then you go to the MIDI menu and you have Merge MIDI in Loop. So click on that 
and make sure that both include inserts and erase destination are selected. Why include inserts mean it will insert the output of the arpeggio here and erase destination. It just means that it will erase these chords and replace them with what comes out of the arpeggio. If you don't select erase destination, you will have both the individual notes and the chords and that's not what we want. So look at what happens when I click on OK. See, now I see each note separately. Um, one thing you should not forget to do is to go back to your MIDI insert and remove the arpeggiator. Why? Because the arpeggiator is still active on the track and if I play it now, it will try to arpeggiate each note, but we don't need to do that anymore. So I will click on no effect and let's see how this sounds. Etc. And that's exactly what we want, but uh, it still sounds a little bit robotic. Let me switch the grid to triplets. If I zoom in there, you can see that each note is falling exactly on the beat. And that's not how a viola player would play these notes. Uh, that's how a machine would play these notes. So I want to add some humanization to it. So I found a way to do that really quickly is by selecting all the notes except the first one and the last one because those I want them to fall exactly on the on the beat. And if you go to your quantize menu here, you see you have this randomize button here and you can randomize the, the position of each note by a certain number of ticks. I found that 10 ticks for this particular case works just fine. So watch carefully the notes in the MIDI grid and how they will move when I click on quantize. See? Now, uh, just kill this. Uh, okay, you don't really hear the difference, but if I turn on the click, and let's zoom in a bit, you can see that this D sharp here uh, doesn't fall exactly on the beat. It starts a bit after. And this F sharp here starts a bit before the beat. And that's exactly what I wanted. Um, so yeah, I turned on the click and see, it's really a subtle effect. And that's it. Uh, one more thing that we can do is that each first note in each pattern, I, I, I want it to be played a little bit stronger than the second one and the third one. So what I can do is I select them, I select each top note and here in my lane in the velocity lane, I will just increase the velocity a little bit. I exaggerate the effect so, so you can hear wh what this does. Um, let's have a listen. And that's it. That's how you can quickly create uh, an ostinato using a uh, arpeggiator based on a chord progression. See you soon!